Hello, everyone. Today is Thursday, July 21st, 2022. This is the week in charts. I'm sure I want to thank all you guys and girls for attending. Uh, again, I make it difficult to find, but if you go to DaveLarner.com slash webinar, you can register for these shows. If you're watching on YouTube, I'd love to have you. Right now, the shows are at 6 p.m. Central Daylight Time. So what are we talk about? Well, obviously, current market conditions. I'll have a tremendous amount to say about that. Your questions on trading, your favorite stock and crypto picks, and live crypto. Well, maybe live crypto is waking up again. So we'll we'll take a look at that in just one second. I want to talk about discretion, the good and the bad, and uh, hopefully we won't have any bad <laughs> to add to our examples. But we, uh, I thought I had some good today, but so far it's uh, not so good. We'll take a look at that in just one second. Uh, Jeff, I believe, was asked me last week about the byline, making an inverted byline for the TFM 10% system. And I'll show you what my thoughts were last week. I went ahead and programmed that in. And as I said a second ago, I think crypto is waking up a little bit. I don't know if we want to rush out and buy just yet, but we'll take a look at that. But if you want to take a look at some crypto pairs, when we get to the live charts, let me know. There's a disclaimer screen. As you know, you can lose money trading. Or as I often sum it up, all predictions about the future and a lot of stuff can happen between now and then. All right, let's talk a little bit about discretion. This was a stock I recommended a while back. It was an energy stock. I guess it still is. And we had a first thrust down, probably also a bow tie. And then it pulled back and the entry was here. And initially it looked pretty darn good. It was moving nicely in our favor. And our stop was a little bit higher than it is now. And we ratcheted it down. And yesterday it did hit that protective stop. Now I stayed with the position. And this was this one wasn't cut and dry. And it's probably good that I'm showing you this one because it's not cut and dry. And basically what I said in the Facebook group, and by the way, if you're a gold member or if you're on the service, make sure you join Facebook. I get emails from people all the time wanting to talk about research and stuff like that and and I, I can talk to you a little bit but obviously my time is kind of limited but if if you bring it up in facebook we all can talk about it and it's kind of like one to many as opposed to one to one as i've said many times which is very inefficient so here's the the stop out on that you can see it stopped out at 3670 and if we take a look at 3670 it's right there on the chart. So as I posted to Facebook, I said, I'm gonna wait till around the close and see what happens. And right around the close, it began to implode a little bit. And I said, you know what? I think I'm gonna stick with it and see what happens. Now, when you do put a little discretion in, it's good to have an uncle point in mind. And based on the Share size on this one, it wasn't a huge share size because we had a really wide stop. So based on the share size, an extra 20 cents or so, I figured wasn't going to kill me. But you do have to have an uncle point in mind. And, and a lot of times my non-English speaking or non-American friends and clients ask me, what do I mean by an uncle point? An uncle point is a point where you have to throw in a towel. We, well, let me just try not to use the metaphor. <laughs> is that uncle, uncle point is a point where you have to get out, no questions asked. So discretion does not mean throwing caution in the wind, into the wind, and there's another metaphor, <laughs> but it means giving things a little bit of wiggle room because markets don't always adhere to our perfect little mechanical ways or our plans, et cetera. Now, I'm going to talk a lot about discretion as far as going as far as whether you're a newer trader or you lack of discipline, et cetera. But the bottom line is you do have to have some discipline discipline to do this. And, and again, for lack of a better way of saying it, you're not throwing caution to the wind. But you see, it did sell off nicely today. Unfortunately, it recovered a lot of that. So there's that little sell-off right into the close. And I said, well, let's just see what happens. And then it got hit pretty hard early on. It felt pretty good earlier in the day, not as good later in the day. Now, as I sort of hinted to a minute ago, if you're newer to trading, 
or you lack the discipline. And you know, another thing I thought about too is even if you have the discipline, you might not want to bother. You might just say, okay, well, technically it's hit the stop. I'm just going to get out of the way. So what? You know, so long and f you. And there'll be others, okay? And you know, you get to go home and sleep that night, okay? And not worry about something potentially bad happening because the position is going against you when you decide to use a little discretion like this. So by all means, exit as planned. I would be, as I think I've said many times before, I would be less impressed, less impressed with a newbie if they use discretion because there's always a chance it could get away from them. And also, let's say you get whacked the next day, that's gonna be really hard for a newbie to stomach when they're not used to getting their, their buttocks handed to them. So the point is that we're increasing the risk slightly intraday on the day when the stop is technically hit. But again, we're not throwing cautious, caution to the wind. We're not being, trying to think of a, an easier way of putting it without using a figure of speech, but we're not being frizzle, frizzle, fr frivolous. So use the five minute chart to a discretion. Uh, not necessarily, George. I just thought a five-minute chart would show you what the market did. I was looking at a 15-minute chart. I was looking at the bid and the ask, and I saw it was kind of coming in a little bit. And I was all I was intent intent upon exiting, but it dropped so fast over a short period of time that I thought, okay, maybe it'll keep on going. Maybe it's worthwhile. Um, if you are a little bit newer to trading or the methodology, what you might do for your discretion is 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 be a little bit more mechanical with it and say, okay, I'm not gonna sit there and, and say if it does this or if it, it does that or whatever. But what I will do is like, okay, I see the stop spin hit, maybe put an alert there and then decide on your uncle point past that and then maybe even put in a hard stop there. If let's say damage control situation, which is another type of discretion, let's say a stock gaps sharply against me and it begins to rally a little bit, I might put in a hard stop right below the low of the day and then go about my life, okay? And if it's something I want out of, then I might turn that hard stop into a trailing stop, okay? To try to improve upon my exit. If it's something that comes roaring back and, and that move, that gap lower, it's just kind of a TKO move in spirit. In other words, the trend is still intact. We just got this big knockout move on the open, kind of a washout, and all of a sudden it starts going straight back up. Then I'm not going to trail an intraday. I'm just going to put that stop in below the low and hang on. So the risk are getting increased at least intraday slightly, and we're not completely abandoning our money management. Now, shit happens, okay? And I thought about that last night when I stuck with this. And I guess no matter what happens to me at any of these trades that I share with you publicly, such as those through the trading service and those that I mentioned in Facebook, is that no matter what happens, there's going to be a lesson there, right? So I didn't want to get creamed today, but if I got creamed today, I could have implemented possibly a damage control plan. And the other thing that I might have thought about uh, or or worst case scenario, if I get knocked out, I get knocked out. And in that case, I just show you that, okay, well, here's the downside of using a little discretion. Now, in case you're wondering why bother, well, trading trends is a game of outliers. And using discretion to stick with a position increases your chances of catching an outlier. So from where I sit, that the the incremental risk is worth the potential reward. Of course, every now and then you might get whacked and you might regret that. And by the way, when you're trading, if you boil it all down, you're making decisions and more importantly, you have to live with those decisions. So if I, would have gotten cream today on this, I'll have to reason with myself and said, you know what, it was worth a shot. 
just in case that stock imploded, kind of like it did on the open, right? And initially began to follow through. It was worth it because there's always a potential it could turn into one of those next big, albeit occasionally elusive, outliers that we live for and that we actually need. And I think, as I've said before, I've been criticized for making it sound too elusive, but sometimes it can feel a little elusive when you're waiting for that next big outlier. And believe me, if you've been following along the surface service lately, I feel your pain. It's like I'm waiting for that next big winner. And I don't know when that's going to happen. Throughout the years, yeah, I tend to wear my feelings on my sleeves, as I often say. My wife will be like, What's wrong, Dave? And well, I'm gonna draw it out. It's like, well, when are you coming out of it? I'm like, oh geez, you know, I have no idea. But fortunately, these big winners seem to come along just enough to keep it interesting and just enough to make it all worthwhile. Am I kind of on an angle here? I hate to mess with this thing. I need to get a oops. I'm gonna make things worse. That's probably worse now. I'll just stand like this. <laughs> Now, let's say you don't, you decide not to use discretion and then you get out where you're supposed to. Well, that's fine. You're being disciplined. But then the position takes off without you. It's like, well, just realize that, okay, you use discipline, which in the long run will pay off being disciplined. And maybe down the road, you can start using a little discretion here and there to possibly stick with your positions. My little Cajun slipped out. I said, dare her. <laughs> Sha. All right, any questions on that? I wanted to talk a little bit about what's going on with GGR as an example of following the plan. Now, ideally, I should have waited until this one just became this phenomenal winner <laughs> so I could say, hey, look what following the plan did. So, so it's a little dangerous, I know, from a, an egotistical standpoint for me to show you this because it is a little early, but I want to show you what happened with this specifically today. So here was the original setup from the trading service, entry of seven, stop of five, uh, 570, initial profit target, that's IPT of 830, and it's a bow tie. To keep the, the chart clean, I didn't put the bow tie in, but it was also a first thrust. So you got a big thrust off of all time lows, and then it begins to pull back. Entry is here, stop is down here, and initial profit target is up here. So let's take a look at what happened. And you can see that it triggered and began to fail miserably pretty much right away. But then today we had an okay rally. Now, I think we weren't quite up as much as when I took this snapshot. But knock on wood, let's just see what happens. It sure looks like it's coming back and it sure looks like a big picture bottom remains in place here in the overall market as we'll look at in just a few minutes seems to be improving too so my point here is a testament for following your plan you get stopped out so be it you made a decision and you need to now simply live with that decision i know easier said than done right i want to continue to do a little little friend updates say hello to my little friend and that's the 30 EMA. I've been uh, really getting into this 30 EMA lately. I know you're probably going to party with me. What's kind of interesting is this is the first green we've seen in a long, 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 long time. Yesterday, uh, I did it today, I recorded the day before. We got published yesterday. I did my Trading Simplified show for StockCharts.com. And I talked about bow ties, and we had a bow tie way up here, and I call that a minor signal because we're not coming off a of major, major, major lows. The bow tie coming into this big slide was a major signal, and that, that show should be, yeah, it's live right now on my website, DaveLearner.com, if you want to check that out. But the point I was making is when we get another bow tie, it's not necessarily going to be a a fantastic buy signal or you shouldn't rush out and buy, but it's gonna be a little bit more significant than this one that we had recently because it's coming off of lower lows. Now, I still consider that a high level 
buy signal should that occur or a minor buy signal and that'll make sense when i when i get to the live charts i'll show you exactly what i mean but the point i'm trying to make is yes you did have a buy signal back here and i think this one's a little bit more significant if you're looking at the 230 ema breakout system it used to be the 220 and it still can be if you want it to be it could be whatever you want obviously free system all we're looking for is two days of daylight and you can't see it because it's behind this little thing. This this number here is two. This just simply counts the number of bars, the highs or below the moving average, which would be red for lows, for, I'm sorry, for downtrends. And then lows are greater than the moving average for uptrends right here. And if it's chopping back and forth a little bit, it goes red, green, red, green, or none if it's intersecting. You can see we didn't have any upside or downside for a little while in here. The behavior of the 30 EMA can really help you out quite a bit. Anyway, so technically two lows above the moving average. I've done quite a few presentations on this. Go to my YouTube channel. If you're watching on YouTube, you're already here. So like and subscribe and I'll thank you. If you don't like it, go have no fun somewhere else. <laughs> uh, all kidding aside though, the, the liking and uh, the liking and the subscribing and things of that nature helps to uh helps the algorithm and you know maybe it'll put me reality based trading put me a little bit higher than these scumbags out there but you know i noticed the scumbags have been kind of washed out of the system a little bit i don't want to digress here but ever since there was that 121 million dollar lawsuit i think a lot of these guys kind of <laughs> thought well you know what maybe i better back off a little bit so bitcoin kind of interesting here we've got two days of landry light and if you squint your eyes you can see little green down here basis of 30 EMA and you can see we've been in a long 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 downtrend and we did have a little bit of a rally and I'm just seeing this for the first time but you can see one two back here buy above this high if you're following the 30 EMA it comes right back in okay and then yeah see this is green down here so one two one two would have been a buy above this high nice little rally higher Maybe with a little money management, you could have gotten a little bit out of the trade, eh, about five thousand, four, five thousand dollars of run in uh, Bitcoin versus the dollar. Anyway, this from you know. By the way, I don't want to once again digress. It's just I know I say this every week, but it's amazing that these people who poo pooed Bitcoin and crypto are like I told you so. It's like, well, you've been telling me so from one thousand, two thousand, four thousand, eight thousand. 60,000, 32,000. Did we get to 64,000? I think we got close. We got to 60 at least. Anyway, so 220 EMA buy system. You see two bars of Landry light. You can see it in the illustrator down below, as I like the column versus an indicator. Now, we do have a lot of overhead supply, as you can plainly see here. So if you did take the trade, entry would be there. And would it be worth it? Uh, I don't know, probably about, sound like Lucy, right? Eh, about $5,000 move, okay? Better than the poke in the eye, I suppose. Now, in individual stocks, by the way, I don't tr I don't outright trade this in individual stocks, and I don't trade this mechanically, by the way, either. I just kind of use it as a, a signal to let me know that, hey, things might be improving. Occasionally, I might fire off a trade with this in some of this crypto, but I don't do it mechanically and across the board or anything like that. The point I want to make here is that things are improving. Like I said last week, we went sideways for a long, long time. So we're not going down as fast as we were. And yeah, we, you can go sideways, consolidate, break down, consolidate, break down, rinse and repeat. But you can see here, notice that we did go sideways, consolidate, and now we're trying to break out. And not the last week at Bandcamp, you but go and look at the stock chart show. And I didn't want to grab too much from that show and bring it here because I'd be just repeating the same thing over and over me doing that imagine that but in that show i did i did put a little mystery chart in there and spoiler alert it was bitcoin and the s p cash and the two almost moved perfectly together now threw in bonds and there was also a high correlation to bonds too and the point i was making that is that in a bear market everything gets sold and the other point was that Bitcoin, which is supposed to be this big safe haven, turns out that at least so far it's not. Same thing happened in the pandemic. 
in the pandemic bear market that is, Bitcoin got absolutely annihilated. Okay, George says 30 is a good stop point as well with limited risk. Yeah, it depends on what you're trading and how you're trading it. But the 30 can be a good little reference. Uh, years ago, probably 30 years ago, I'm starting to date myself here. But many, many years ago, I did a lot of experimenting with, with moving average pivots, okay? So it's like, okay, let's say you're short this market, somewhere in here or whatever, you just happen to get short for whatever reason. And it rallies up a little bit above the moving average, no upside landry light or anything. And it makes this pivot. So it's like that pivot point becomes a nice little reference and maybe a nice point to think about getting out. Not a hard stop, but maybe a point to think about getting out. And then in this case, it implodes and then makes that little pivot here and it implodes. Okay. Makes a little pivot here. Let's say you were short for a long, long time. And it's like, okay, well, now we took that pivot out. You might want to think about covering. Okay. Now, as you know, with the core methodology, something like the ARLP, over time, we let that stop gradually open up once we get our initial profit targets out, and we're kind of switching hats to longer-term trend-following mode. And if you were to maybe look at a weekly chart and then look at the, how far that stop is away, it might make a little bit more sense. So we're, we're kind of shifting out of that short-term swing trader and we're moving into that longer term trader and believe me that's where the money is i don't know if you saw that a little bit of that portfolio earlier you know you got one stock losing money you got one stock that's up sixteen thousand dollars well that's been in there for a long long time but that's sixteen thousand dollars on a 100k account and when not if when that eventually stops out i'll show you the entire trade and for me, one thing I was thinking about covering tonight, at least woke up thinking about it, and I'll, I'll get to it, I'm sure, soon, is that the the trading service and the things that I say publicly, either here or in the stock chart show, or not so much Twitter, but I am getting a little bit more active on Twitter, but in the Facebook group, it kind of forces me, making all these public declarations, to practice what I, pre what I preach. And that could be a good thing, that type of commitment device. So not enough time to get into it tonight, but in upcoming shows, I'll get into it and talk a little bit about what's your commitment device. And we talked about that before too. All right, uh, last week, Jeff said something about inverted byline. And he was talking about using the lowest low as a reference. And my point was just off the cuff was that bear markets, in a bear market, you can have a pretty big rally pretty fast. And it could easily bounce 10% off the low. But before we talk too much about that, just the TFM 10% system uses a 50 simple moving average and what I call the buy line, which is actually the sell line. But <laughs> it, it, the whole idea behind the system was to get out the way when the market got in trouble, okay? It's, it's more of a getting out of the market system than it is getting in the market. But there are parameters, obviously, to get back in. In fact, we had a, a whipsaw signal back here, and then the market came right back in. And I didn't take it for various reasons. One, because this was the signal week here, and the market looked like it was coming right back in. So you could put a little discretion on these, these mechanical systems and say, okay, I get what Dave's saying about the buy but the market's really, really weak. I'm a trend follower. I rather buy on strength and weakness, so I'm going to sit on my hands a little bit. It's okay to use your brains with these things versus following them strictly on a mechanical basis. But anyway, that's a buy line, and that's just, you just take the closing high and you subtract 10% from that. So if the market drops 10%, it would be right at that buy line, so to speak. Now. What Jeff was saying was add 10% to the, the lowest low. And then I also programmed an indicator to add 10% to the closing low. So the lowest low is the orange line and the closing low is the red line. Now you can see it begins to catch up with price fairly quickly. And that's the point I made last couple of webinars. If you have the big V-shaped recovery, the buy line is not going to start dropping down. 
until 50 weeks, okay? Because it's a 50 week closing high. And I guess I should probably just make all this 52 weeks. So we could just say it's one year, but the market would have to drop for nearly a year before this begins to come down. God forbid we get into an extended bear market, it will start catching up the price. And as I said last week, even though I know the system is a little slow in getting you back in, there are other metrics that we could use to get back in to a market. And here's the thing right now, I don't think we've dropped far enough for me to worry about getting back in until, and at least if I was doing some longer term investment, maybe some leftover funds for my kids or whatever, that I do tend to put them in and out of uh, the S&P, then maybe if we get back above the buy line and stay there for a while, maybe get a little signal above this, I might go ahead and put them back in. But I do use other techniques too. But anyway, so you can see that we would be right at about 10% from this low as measured from the low to here, which is pretty impressive. Now, if we go back to the pandemic, we had this close here below the buy line, which triggered our TFM 10% system. And then we had this big V-shaped recovery. And we didn't get another buy until somewhere in here. And I've showed the spreadsheet before, so no need to get in all that. But two lows above the, it was actually on this day here for those keeping score, okay? That week here, the close of that week would have been the entry. Two lows above the 50 simple moving average and a close, it also has a close above the buy line. Now you can see these lows, the low indicators would have caught up to it, the inverted buy line, if you want to call it that. But notice that the moving average is still way up here. So the moving average takes a long time to catch up. So my only concern is that you would end up with a lot of whipsaw getting in really, really early what these lows plus 10% type of indicators are closing lows plus 10%, which is probably a little bit better one to use, probably a little less whipsaw. Now, like I said last week, the buy line will begin to drop once you get 50 days, 50 weeks, I'm sorry, or more away from that closing high. So in this case here, after about 50 days or exactly 50 days, this is the closing high here. And then this is the closing high, and then this is the closing high. Well, if you broadcast those forward, that would be right here or actually right here. You can see, as I have circled down below, we did close above the lows plus 10%, and then we did close above, we closed above both of them here, but that was just a little bit of a retrace rally, and it happened again here, okay? But once again, that was a retrace rally. So my point is, in a bear market, you're going to get a lot of rallies above those lines, okay? Now, again, the 50-week simple moving average took a while to catch up. You know, maybe if you want to develop a system that'll get you a little quicker, maybe use an exponential moving average so it'll front weight, front weight things a little bit more, or maybe use a shorter term moving average. But this is all done on weekly charts. And again, we have daily signals. But I just want to kind of show you what you would probably run into if you were using some sort of system like this. Now, I'm just kind of looking at it. Let me throw out a little fodder for research. What if we use the concept of this inverted buy line, if you want to call it that. We need a better name for both of these lines, or all three of these lines. But let's take a look at the 10% off the close. I think 10% off the lows would be way too noisy. And let's make our system kind of like, instead of using the Landry light with a moving average, what if you use Landry light? And I'm just seeing this on the fly here too. And it's an absolute perfect example. <laughs> but what if your buy was, and I don't know if this low is greater than that, but let's say your low had to be greater than your inverted buy line, okay? Which is just 10% from this closing low here. 
And what if you need two two lows below and then that was your buy, okay? So landry light, so to speak, or daylight, so to speak, above that inverted line. Maybe that works, I don't know. There's gonna be cases where the this line, you can see right here, it's actually right there, gets above your, your buy line here because this is going off of 50 week closing highs and this is going off of 50 week lows. And if the market begins to roll over, it's gonna hit those lows. It's gonna be making 50 week lows and the, the 50 week highs are not gonna reset for 50 weeks, okay? So that's another anomaly of it. Maybe that's why a moving average might keep you out of trouble, especially with the Landry light. So right here, for instance, yeah, you're back above that inverted line, but you don't have any upside Landry light. So that should give you a little fodder to to research, to doodle around with. Um, it's hard for me to work with you guys one on one with this. Obviously, it's it's incredibly time consuming when you do research, which I don't mind doing. But my problem is I'm already behind schedule on so many deadlines. When I open up this uh, <laughs> Pandora's box and start start doing the rabbit hole of research, it can really kind of suck you in. But I would encourage you to do as much as you can on your own. And I just got to be careful because once I start, I'll, I'll lose four or five hours really quickly. And then all of a sudden it's, you know, 30 minutes before the close and nothing got done. Anyway, you can see way back here, it did close above both of those lines. So, yeah, it would get you in early. But how many times would it get you in early? Or it's, this would have been ideal, but what about all these other whipsaw? So you would probably need some sort of whipsaw filter, whether that's, Landry light above that line or thrown into moving average. Don't throw in too much stuff because then you'll overly complicate it. All right. Uh, I'm going to fire up crypto real quick. And if you guys want to talk about any pairs in general, I'm not going to spend a lot of time. The point I want to make tonight is that it, it has begun to wake up a little bit at least. And let's. Uh, show it now the great thing about crypto as i've said i know i've done a while back last fall more specifically was all you had to do <laughs> inside joke there was sort by the strongest and just buy the strongest okay with a few caveats and i wouldn't i wouldn't rush out and do that in this market but you can see that it is beginning to wake up in a lot of cases. Now, one of the caveats is you wanna make sure you're trading in something that's that has good liquidity. You wanna look at that liquidity spread that most brokerages provide, and you wanna see how much depth that market has. And let's say you wanna buy, I mean, even just a thousand dollars worth, just go in and look and say, okay, yeah, I'm seeing some thousand dollar transactions, some $20,000 transactions. Okay, so this thing looks pretty, pretty thick, okay? So there's a few things in here that are certainly waking up. One thing that I've been looking at is this SOL. I no longer have an order in place, but I have an alert in place. Sometimes I run an order for a couple of days and then replace it with alert so I don't forget about it. And you can see you've got one, two, technically the 230 EMA is already triggered. This one doesn't have a lot of overhead supply till way up here i think george was pointing one out and it had just a big old mountain of overhead supply and george speaking of the devil <laughs> he's talking about she being a 230 ema let's take a look at that yeah so she and you can see i got an alert set just in case is a 230 ema and you don't have any overhead supply for a long 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 ways i think i probably still have a half a billion of this laying around uh I was looking at it at earlier today, and uh, you know, I told myself I'd hold it for a year and see what happened. And it has failed miserably, and I was hoping it would work out. Obviously, you know, <laughs> we're always hoping, right? What I did was when Bitcoin and crypto in general were blowing and going like way back here, what I was doing way back last fall, which was wonderful, what I would do is I'd take partial profits on these and I'd leave a little piece behind, just some crumbs, like 50 bucks in each one. In some cases, I'd do that three and four times 
And before you knew it, I had two and three, in some cases, I think I had like $400 or three or $50, I remember, invested <laughs> in like crypto.com, CRO. And I just thought that was kind of interesting. And my point was, you can go back and watch the videos, but the point was that I was mining crypto, so to speak, without having to plug in a very expensive miner, expensive to operate, expensive to buy. Although I'd be willing to bet, you probably get them really cheap right now. I don't want to digress too far. I don't imagine that. But I was trying to explain to um, uh, like an uncle-in-law or whatever that um, trying to explain the mining to him. And I said, yeah, you can go on eBay. At least back then you could. You could buy a brand new miner for like $175 or $200 and bring it home and plug it in. <laughs> And it'll lose about $20 a day for you or whatever the case may be. I think it was $5 a day or something. And that's how fast the technology moves. And that's why I think as a small guy, at least nowadays, it, it's mining is is just not worth your while. Put your efforts into learning how to trade. And, you know, if this thing takes off and you double or triple your money over a short period of time, that's, that's going to be a lot more productive than trying to run a miner. But yeah, good eye, George, on that. There's a few in here I like to keep an eye on. Uh, Eloin coin, just because it's fun to watch. Okay. And look at the decimals on that. I think I have a billion of these left over from the last time it took off, which was way back here. But the beauty of these things is, boy, when they go like this, you can absolutely print money. I don't know if we'll get back to that market, though. I really don't. All right, any other pairs you guys want to look at? But it is beginning to heat up a little bit. We are starting to get above the 30 EMA. I've done countless presentations where everything looks like that, one after another, just well below the 30 EMA and below the 30 EMA forever. But now it's beginning to kind of wake up a little bit. And then let's just go back to the Bitcoin real quick. This is one thing I've been posting in Facebook or a while back. If all you did was say, I'm not going to buy a market below the 30 EMA, you would have been out of Bitcoin from 43,000 down to 17,000. So that's like a 60% drop just by paying attention to the 30 EMA. All right, John was talking about flow. Oh, where is it? Must have accidentally got rid of it. Oh, I'll find it. Well, goes to T. Okay. Yeah, John, that looks pretty good. Um, a lot of overhead supply right here. I mean probably far enough away to take it as a trade entry would be above this high outside of alarm just for s and g's i probably won't take it because it just doesn't seem you know now that i'm looking at it again it doesn't seem like enough enough room to run but yeah good eye on that john all right any any other crypto you want to look at What is crypto.com doing? If I can find it. I used to have my, I have foot pedals I use to flip through charts and forward space and, and TC is a uh, space, or I'm sorry, space goes forward and backspace goes back. But I would spend hours getting all this, these symbols set, set up and I would kept, I kept, uh, Wipe it about every time I try to go back one. So I finally figured that out and I changed the foot pedal. Uh, yeah, crypto.com. Yeah, this is one that back here I was kind of bullish on. And that's one that I kept going back to the well on and ended up with a bunch of it mined, so to speak, saved off a bunch of little pieces. And uh, that experiment failed miserably, but it was kind of a fun thing to do. I know you were part of with me. All right, any more before we get out of crypto? All right, let's shift gears and let's go over to the live charts. 
And it's just a couple things I want to go through real quick. So the S&P 500, the point I was making in the TC, I'm sorry, in the Trading Simplified show was we had this bow tie back here, okay? If you use bow ties to stay on the right side of the market, and now we're in downtrend proper water, and then we bow tied up here. I wouldn't, I wasn't that excited about this signal. I was more concerned about this signal here coming off of all time highs as opposed to this signal here because we're just really at not even one year lows. But the further down we go, the more important these signals are going to be. And that's the point I was trying to make earlier. A little bit easier to see in the chart. By the way, let's take a look at a five minute chart. As I've said, 50 bazillion times paying attention to these bow ties. There's a bear market, there's a bull market, there's a bear market, there's a bull market. Okay. This was almost a bear market. Um, this right here, I don't remember if this one actually triggered or not. And then obviously the pandemic, this the signals were slow here because we had such a crazy V shape recovery on that. But the point I'm getting to here, believe it or not, I have one, is if you're paying attention to weekly charts, especially once the market cracks like this, and pay attention to that proper order, it'll help keep you out of some pretty serious bear markets. That and plus stupid little tools or silly little tools like the TFM 10% system. So from a bigger picture perspective, we're still rolled over in here in the market. And this is just another retrace shorter term though i mean you got to start somewhere right you got to have a little faith a little hope but you can see we could bow tie up here we got a little bit overhead supply to deal with so in general this market is improving i'm a little concerned that a lot of people now this this i can't quantify this okay but it just seems that a lot of people have gotten really excited really fast and we really haven't taken off that much but i am seeing some improvement internally and i am i'm not going to be obstinate right and if we start seeing some setups i'll start taking them bonds have begun to bottom out a little bit kind of have a bit of a head and shoulders bottom this could turn into the mother of all bottoms and we're not there yet i'm not calling a bottom there are some people that predict early and often <laughs> i would never throw anybody under the bus but there was one guy geez. He, he called the market top day after day after day after day. The market sells off 2%. He's like, ah, I told you. He's like, okay. Then the market goes straight back up for six months. I'm sure he called this last top of the market early and often. <laughs> anyway, I digress. Imagine that. Bonds had a pretty good day today. And, you know, bonds, okay, look like that. Let's take a look at, let's just go flip back real quick to S&P 500. Look like that. Okay, Bitcoin or GBTC kind of looks like this kind of, they're all kind of bottoming at the same time. And that was the point I was making in that presentation I posted yesterday is in a bear market, you often have a lot of positive correlation. You can see we could get a bow tie to the upside really soon. We've already crossed the 30 EMA and the 20 EMA is trying to crossed over too. So we could end up with, with proper water here really soon on the NASDAQ. And if you don't know what these averages are, they're up here, 10 simple, 20 exponential, 30 exponential. NASDAQ at multi-month highs, that's a good thing. Almost plowed through this overhead supply. Pretty excited about that. Take a look at gold, okay? You know, no place to run, no place to hide. All the fear mongering, these guys on TV. I like the way Larry Williams said it. You know, it's like uh, they, they tell you how great gold is going to be, but they sure want your dollars. <laughs> so it's like, okay. Take a look at the Rusty. Rusty approving. As you can see, these moving averages are coming together. Could bow tie to the upside soon, meaning 10 will be greater than the 20 and 20 will be greater than 30. Wait for it, though. Don't get too excited just yet. On the downside, I still think energies are in trouble in here. And you can see we have the bow tie there and so far still in downtrend profit water, but they have worked their way a little higher as of late. We have one as a short in tonight's service. Wait for an entry on that, as I've been saying, a nauseam. 
Some areas like the banks still not looking so hot in here. Pretty serious downtrend remains intact. Pretty pretty much just kind of rallying back up. Financials overall kind of look like the market itself, kind of a mirror image or, or an overlay. What's the word I'm looking for? 100% positive correlated to the S&P 500 or close to it. Biotechnology, I've been slightly bullish on biotech. Biotech has made the bow tie, not at super, super low levels, but at fairly low levels, okay? to the upside, so that's a good sign, kind of carving out a bottom a little bit in here, one day at a time. Problem with biotech, as I've been saying, a nausea is uh, it has a tremendous amount of overhead supply. All right, just a couple more sectors, and if you guys wanna talk individual stocks, let me know. Semiconductors have been one of the weaker areas for a while, but lately they've begun to take off a little bit. They could bow tie. They're not, again, coming off of like 10-year lows or anything like that, which I prefer, but they are improving a little bit. So don't get me wrong. I think the trend remains down for now, at least the intermediate to longer-term trend. But shorter term, the market is rallying quite a bit. And one thing to watch, obviously, whenever the market rallies, you know, this is not super-duper overbought. But if it gets super overbought and then rolls right back over, then we're in trouble. If it gets overbought, corrects a little bit, and then starts working away its way back higher, then we might be okay. Let the database tell you what to do. That's usually the best thing to do. You know, even though I say it ad nauseum, people say still ask me all the time, maybe once a month. Where do you find these stocks? It's like, well, I go through a couple thousand charts every night. That's how I find these stocks. And over the past several weeks, if you've been following along with the service, and you can look at all the archives if you want, davelander.com slash archives, you'll see I've been talking a lot about biotech trying to bottom out, but just can't really find any setups there. But the point I was trying to get to is that let the database tell you what to do. If you're getting a lot of buy signals and a lot of individual stocks, then maybe the market's improving and maybe you want to start nibbling at those. If you're getting a bunch of shorts, and you can't find a buy to set, set, save your life, then you might want a short, or as we've seen in more recent times in the middle of summer, can't find a setup to save my life. So we've been mostly sitting on our hands. Why would you pay a guy to do nothing? Boy, I tell you, if, if I could pay a guy to tell me to do nothing and he kept me out of trouble, <laughs> I would pay that guy. And that's kind of like a holy grail hunt is if you can figure out when not to trade, then all you'd be left with is great trades because you wouldn't have taken any bad ones but we know that's a holy grail hunt in which you could do instead until you find that holy grail which doesn't exist is take the best and occasionally if you can't find the best sit on your hands all right any stocks i know we talk stocks all day in facebook prph as a tko prph yeah that would be kind of an extreme tko i saw this one recently the volume's a little bit on the light side. You only have 200K on average. 200K used to be, what's weird is, your markets are always cha always changing, and that's why you gotta pay careful attention. But 200K seemed like a lot of volume, or plenty of volume in the past, but now it doesn't seem like it's as much volume as it used to be. I think that's too extreme for a TKO. But yeah, if this thing went all the way to 14, this it, it might be off to the races, but that's just a little bit too extreme. But I like the way you think and I see I see what you're saying. So a TKO is when you have a nice, nice trend, sort of like you have here, and then you have this big old bam knockout bar, which just flushes people out of the system. In this case, it's probably too thin, but if it's a little thicker stock, it'll suck in a bunch of shorts. And if the market reverses, it kind of like sucks everybody in, spits them out, and then takes off without them. And then those people who got knocked out have to put up a shut up. They might have to throw in the towel and buy, et cetera. I know I've talked about TKOs quite a bit. Uh, I like the way you think, John, but I think it's too extreme. I really do. All right, anything else? Going once, going twice. Well, thank everybody for showing up. I appreciate that. Again, if you want to attend live, register you if the link is old. I will be adding in new shows too. Like, like today, if you'd register, it's like, well, he's not going to do this till December. Well, 10 minutes before the show, I added in tonight's show. So that's how it works. I do constantly add in new shows. Once you're registered, though, you're registered for good. DaveLander.com slash uh, 
webinar to register. Don't worry about the date when you go to register. All right, everybody have a great night. I'll see all you guys and girls on Facebook tomorrow. Everybody else have a great weekend, and hopefully I'll see you guys again next week. Thank you so much. Uh, you're welcome, Jeff. You're welcome, George.